What's up guys, it's Denodon here, and today I am back in Kerbal Space Program where I am building a small probe that you could land on the surface of a moon or even potentially another planet, though I doubt that would be easy to do. Now, I like to build them as small, compact and lightweight as possible, so that's what we're going to do here. So to start with, we've got to pick a probe core, so I'm going to go with this one because it is the thinnest and also the lightest which is something I like, so holding the mouse wheel down to zoom in there is our probe core now we need some propulsion so let's find an engine well first a tank now we could go with that one maybe and you can see you can even embed the tanks in the probe which I suppose is cheating but I'm gonna do that anyway because that makes things much more compact as you can see now, let's just stick an engine on there. Let's go with... where is it? I've lost it. There we go. The LV-1 liquid engine. Stick that on there and that kind of embeds itself in the thing, but that doesn't matter. Now we need a bit more fuel, so let's get a toroidal tank and stick it on like that. That'll do. So there is basically our probe. Oh, I never noticed. You got a little temperature gauge there. That's kind of nice. So now what do we need? We need some landing gear. So let's find through the landing gear. We want the lightweight ones. Let's find a spot we can put them. We want three of them because four is too many, but three should be enough. If we stick them like that and then we right click on it and goes with extended, we can see that gives us plenty of ground clearance. So those will work. So we can retract those. Now we need to give it some more stuff that it will need. Now it's going to need some science equipment. Because even though we're in creative mode here, you would theoretically be using this to gather some sort of science. So let's just stick, you know, the usuals. Let's stick, set the symmetry back to one. We'll set a thermometer there. We'll set a, let's think, Gravimax detector. I mean, most of these you probably couldn't really use, but I'm going to stick them on anyway, because, well, why not? It's not really hurting anyone. And it doesn't really matter about where I put these, because they're physicsless objects. So, I'm going to just stick that one there as well. Uh, I'm going to move that up a bit, because I prefer that to be somewhat symmetrical. I'm going to get a stick to a battery pack on the top, just the one. But I'm going to use symmetry to try and figure out where roughly the center point is. Seems to be about there. So if I reset that, there we go. We've got a battery. Battery seems to be the largest part of this whole thing. Now we're just going to need some form of power generation. So I'm going to stick two panels, one on either side. Again, doesn't matter that they're clipping through stuff. I'm going to move that out the way though and put that there just so it looks a bit better. And there's our probe. It's got everything it needs. Oh wait, no, it needs some communications. So let's just give it this. And where can we stick that? Let's just stick it there and we'll have two of them. So you know, you can say there's a backup in case one fails. So there we go, there's our little probe. So let's just call it little probe. There we go. Now let's see how this goes. Let's save and launch. So here we go. This is what the probe looks like when it's sitting on the ground. Now you can see it's got quite a wide footprint for its size, which is useful. So let's just extend the comms transmitter, because why not? And then we'll retract these because let's see how this actually flies. So retract and retract. Now you can see we don't have much fuel, but we've also only got a little engine, so that doesn't make too much of a difference. Extend that one as well. So we've got like feelers, I guess. Now let's space, activate the engine. Let's throttle up. You can see this thing can just about fly under Kerbin's gravity. But remember, this is intended to land on a moon where you don't have to worry about gravity so much. So for a surface like Minmus in particular, or Drez, or Pol, or Bop, or any of those, it would be a lot easier to simply fly this thing around. And you don't have to worry about too much because 
As you can see, even on Kerbin, I'm managing to have pretty decent endurance for the size of what this is. So, landed, bit of sinking into the ground there, but that's no problem. One thing you need to remember is that your panels need to be retracted before you try flying them somewhere with an atmosphere. Otherwise, you'll find you may have issues with them simply getting ripped off by the atmosphere. Like you can see here, we're doing okay, even though I shouldn't be flying with these panels out like this. But that doesn't seem to be affecting things much. Oh, there we go, they got broken. But, there we go, let's cruise along. Now we've got no power generation, so we're kind of screwed. But, a oh, bit of a hard landing there, but we're down. So what kind of rocket would you put this on? Well, I found one method that works really well is to use basically just the small parts you can find. So if we go across to the structural tab and we bring up the small stack decoupler, I mean you can use a stack separator but I tend to use the stack decoupler, you stick that in there just like that, it kind of clips in but it works. These can be on the same stage because it doesn't matter. Now we need to put an adapter, well we don't need to, I just like to because it looks better. If I can remember where they are, no, that's not the Kerberdyne parts, that's way too big. Uh, that one, no, Rocket Max, that's still too big, that one. Stick one of those on, and then let's put a nice small tank. The 200 is what I tend to like using. And then if we stick the little Rocket Max engine on it, there's a pretty good transfer stage. Now, with a probe this size, I managed to put a satellite, not a lander, but a satellite, into orbit around EVE and DUNA without having to have any more than just this from Kerbin's orbit. But, of course, you need to get this up to Kerbin's orbit first. So you'll need to put something below this. So what I'll do there is we go across to the Structural tab, Let's continue expanding this out. We need to add another decoupler or a stack separator. Let's just put a, which is this one? Yeah, stack separator, why not? Now it leaves a bit of a gap there, which I don't like, but there's nothing much you can really do about that. Now, I found what works for me is that if you're flying quite well, you can just stick two of these big long tanks under it. Well, they're not that big compared to some tanks, but I don't know, it works. So all we need for this first stage is, well, an engine. So let's go down here, and I like to use the LVT-45 because it has thrust vectoring. So I'll stick that on like that. Now all we need is some air fins or control winglets for, well, control early in the atmosphere. So we'll stick those on like that. Now, I like to give a little boost during the takeoff stage. So if we go to structural, let's find these radial decouplers. We'll stick three of them on the sides like that. Now if we go to propulsion, the small solid rocket boosters will be enough. Just find the right spot. That'll do. Uh, actually, they could do one more across. They're not quite centered, and I like them to be. So, yep, like that. So there's our SRBs, and I want them all to fire, then I want them to separate as the center engine fires. And because I like my rockets to look prettier, I'll give it an air, air nose cone, or nose cone, not an air nose cone, what am I thinking about? Aerodynamic nose cone, that's it. So there's a booster. So it's pretty simple, pretty small, but it should work. So we'll call this little probe plus compact booster. Save and launch.